Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to display video content inside of text using Magic's Movie Edit Pro. Okay, so on my desktop, I've got this folder and inside this folder, I've got this one video clip. I downloaded that video clip from Pixabay. I'll put a link to that in the YouTube description. Let's go ahead and open up Magic's Movie Edit Pro and we just drag and drop this fire clip onto the timeline. So the goal here is to use this fire clip but have some text and then display this fire clip only where the text displays. So to do this, we actually want to use something called GIMP, which is an image editing software. You can do the same logic using Photoshop. So if you have Photoshop, you can use that too. Okay, let's go ahead and open up GIMP. So I've got GIMP software here, and I'm gonna to go to File New, and we'll create an image which is 1920 by 1080 at 72 DPI resolution. And we'll click OK here. The rest of the settings, you can leave them as they are. The background color, uh, we'll set that to the foreground because the foreground is black, right? So we'll set it to foreground. But we can, I'll show you how to change that in a moment. Let's just leave it as um, background for now. We'll click OK. So the actual color of this um, canvas is white, but we want to make it black. The background is here white and the foreground is black like this. So we just want to make this black. So let's go to the paint bucket tool and we can just click on the canvas and change it to black like this. Okay, the next thing we want to do is add some text. So let's click on the text tool and we'll click on the canvas and we can type anything we like. I'm going to type in, let's just type in awesome. So I've typed in this text awesome, it's really hard to see. So I'm gonna press Control A to select everything and I'm gonna to go to the color tool here and set it to white. I want the text to be white and the background to be black. Let's select uh, the move tool and we just drag and drag that to towards the center of the canvas somewhere centered out nicely around here should be good now we just want to export this file so let's go to file export as and we'll go to my desktop and we'll go into this folder and we want to save this as a jpeg file so let's just call this um i'm just going to call it awesome dash zero one dot jpeg file so let's save this export and we export it and we can set it to 100% quality is fine and we'll click export let's minimize this now okay so in this folder we have this uh, jpeg file it's just a black background with the white text written across the top so what we want to do is take that text and drag and drop it onto the second layer it should sit the layer below the video clip let's click on that text go to the effects and scroll down in the video effects section here we want to scroll down and select mask generator click on that and then click apply effect and what we want to do is invert it so click invert and you'll see it's all a white background but you're still going to see some of the like the fire or whatever it is in the uh, slightly so you want to just change the height in you just want to reduce that a little bit until you see a plain white background here plain and white so you can leave it like this you can go ahead and click play and now your fire text or your fire video will show within the text right like this or if you want the background to be black i think it would look a lot better black Let's scroll up to the top and click on brightness and contrast and we can bring that brightness all the way down and now when we click play we've got this really nice black background with this awesome text written on top of it right so you can go and experiment with that and you can create any sort of mask we're creating masks here so you can create any type of mask just remember black for what you want to hide and white for what you want to keep and then you can create uh, variants of that as well so you can do like gray scaling and stuff like this to show only partial amounts um, so you can go and experiment with this okay let's try and improve this layer mask uh, in GIMP so let's just open up GIMP and we'll make a few little edits to it so let's select the rectangle tool and we're going to create a new layer so let's go down to here and we'll create a new layer and let's make sure that layer is transparent so select transparency and click OK we've got the rectangle tool and we just want to draw a little rectangle almost like a little underline just underneath this um, this uh, text here so something like this and then we'll go to the paint bucket tool we'll make sure white is selected on the top here on the swatch so it's white and we can click here and fill it in white and then we just want to click the move tool and just slightly move it across just so that it's aligned nicely underneath that text you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move it uh, on smaller increments let's click back on that um, rectangle tool I want to draw a little box underneath here in the corner you can hold down the shift key to constrain it something like this will be pretty good and we'll fill that in white as well let's just fill that in white and then we'll go to select and none so 
we've got this little shape underneath. I want to replicate this and put it across the top here as well. So on this layer, I'm just going to right click on it and duplicate layer. So I've got two copies of the same layer. I want to rotate this layer, this top one. So let's go to the rotation tool here. We'll click on that layer and we want to rotate it minus 180. So now you can see it's positioned across the top because we just rotate it around 180 degrees. We'll click the rotate button. Let's click back on the move tool and we'll just drag that so that it sits nicely across the top as well. Something around here, just want them to be like almost opposites, right? Something like this. Let's click on this bottom one. We'll shift it. Uh, we'll sh let's click on the move tool, move tool, and we can shift this bottom one slightly to the left, I think around here this positioning looks pretty good and this is quite a base i'm just going to try and understand that black will be uh, hidden and white will show through so this is a second example let's go to file save as we might have saved this bit of work so let's just go to my desktop go into here and we'll just save this here it's worth saving this this gimp file then we can export it again export as and we're going to save it as awesome 2 version 2 let's export that and let's minimize this and then we'll get that folder open Let's just get that folder open and we'll open up magics and we'll take this second version and drag and drop that onto the timeline let's drag this first version away to the side and click on this second let's bring that up a little bit click here let's go back to the mask generator click that click apply mask invert it so you can see it's white now and then just change the high in so that you can see plain white in the background like this and then move back up go to brightness and bring that down now you've got this effect right so you can see how we can use GIMP you can do the same thing in Photoshop it doesn't have to be GIMP you can use Photoshop you can use any any image editing software as long as it's you can create a black background with some type of white element on top it doesn't have to be text it could just be shapes uh, it could be a silhouette of a person it could be anything it could be your logo it could be anything you like right but just black background white text or white elements on top so then we'll click play now now we can see only those particular elements show through so let's go ahead and click the save button that's how you go about using magic smooth edit pro to display video content inside of text but remember you can use any type of shape it doesn't have to be text it could be a circle shape it could be anything that you like as long as it's a white color you're good to go so I hope you find this tutorial useful and I look forward to seeing you in the next DCP Word tutorial.